on that one. Let's get these again. Something is not happening. Oh, well, that's a problem. That could be why. I'm like, where did my light go? All right, same thing again, but better. All right, all right. All right, uh, some BTS from a fashion portfolio photo shoot with Rain. Uh, she's a singer, entertainer, model from San Antonio, Texas, with styling by Deja Chanel and makeup by Cynthia Hernandez, all from San Antonio, Texas. Using Godox lighting, the 8400 and the 8300, I've got just a 36 inch softbox lighting for key and a 12 by 56 inch strip box, just for a little bit of rim. Uh, provide some separation between the subject and the background. So let's go ahead and get into this. And before we do, if you like this type of content, give me a subscribe, give me a like. I appreciate it. And thanks for watching. Yes. glasses up and not all the way on but it turned to me and just kind of like you had them before just kind of yeah. perfect the light didn't go off on that one let's get these again something is not happening oh well that's the problem that could be why. I'm like, where did my light go? All right, same thing again, but better. But better. All right. Perfect. All right, so let's edit one of these shots. Uh, this is the one of my favorite shots here uh, from the shoot. Pretty, I was using the Tamron 28 to 75. I was at 58 millimeters here. Um, I think I left the overhead lighting on in the studio. Usually I turn it off. It's a little bit yellowish, and it definitely affected my skin tones and my white balance. So um, just something to remember. This is a rented studio. Um, the overhead lighting is a little yellowish in the studio and most of the time what I'll do is turn it off and then uh, use like a uh, either a constant light set to daylight or a ring light set to daylight to illuminate the subject um, give enough light in the studio just for my camera to focus so um, wasn't doing that here so let me adjust the white balance I'm gonna bring it all the way down to 4900 that helps let me go to 4500 I'm going to go to 4,500. It might be a little cool. Uh, we'll start there, though. Um, right out of the gate, I think I want to... I mean, it's lit pretty well. Maybe bring up the shadows just a little bit. Um, bring the blacks down just a little bit. Probably wouldn't even reach for the exposure. Let me take these highlights, and they're a little hot. So I'm going to bring those down just a, a little bit here. Okay. Um, vibrance, I always bring up to like between 15 and 20. Um, she has just nearly perfect skin. Sometimes I'll bring the texture down just a hair, just to smooth uh, the skin out just a little bit. And, uh, you know, come down to sharpening and bring it up to about 70, 80. Uh, and then the masking, I'll hold down the alter option. 
so you can see the mask as you're bring it, sliding it over. I'll bring that usually up to 80 or 90, something like that. Um, if we're cropping for Instagram, I will bring the crop in uh, at 4 by 5 for the Instagram crop. Fortunately, we've got enough room here. Unlike many of my other videos where you see me filling in the sides and doing all that, most of the time I don't do that. I actually compose the shot the way it should be. So um, I'm going to bring this in just a little bit more, maybe bring her down uh, about right there. That looks pretty good. So um, I'm going to bring maybe the exposure down just a hair, just about right there. There we go. And I think that's pretty good. So, I mean, I could leave this the way it is. Um, there's the floor was a little bit dirty here from people walking on it. And there's a little issue here with the background, a little fold in the background paper. And I do look for that stuff too. Um, try to smooth it out before I start shooting. Cause that means it's less that I have to do in post. Right. I remember looking at this and it had little bumps in the paper going across and I tried to smooth them out as best I can, but, um, that's the best I could do. So I end up having to edit in post. So let's edit this in Photoshop then. All right, so we've got the shot up in Photoshop now. Let me do a control J that just duplicates the background layer. Um, keeps your background pristine in case you wanna go backwards. You don't like anything you did. Um, I'm gonna start off by choosing the quick selection tool. I'm gonna to choose the select subject button at the top. Usually does a really good job. Uh, may have some difficulty with the hair up here, given that we don't have a ton of, you know, it's it's dark hair on a dark background. It, it does okay. I, I'm not going to get into the hair too much up there. I'm really going to, I like this the way it is. It didn't get the heels. I'm going to have to try and add to the selection because I am going to be working mainly down here at the bottom. So I'm going to come down here and it's doing a horrible job. I hold down my alt to turn the selection into a minus just to see if I can refine this a little bit. I mean, that helps a little bit. It's not a perfect selection. As you can see, that's a little wonky. Sometimes I'll just click and see if it will grab the edges. There's just not a ton of contrast right here for it to find. So it's just not doing a great job, but we're just going to have to be careful around this area that we don't come in here and wipe out the heel, right? So that's pretty good. Like I said, I'm going to be working primarily right here and then down here in this area to clean this up down here. So I'm going to choose right click and choose select inverse just to select the background, right? So let's come over here and we will use the paint tool and I'm going to set my flow to about oh, 20%, 15 might've been good. Um, and I'm going to try to wipe this out first. So I'm going to use my right and left bracket key, which is next to the P key. Come here and I'm using a well, I had a, all right, so. <laughs> Dude, my pen tool found it. Using a pen, pen and tablet at Wacom, there we go. Um, you can use your mouse if you want to, but I've gotten so used to this tablet and then uh, the pen is always rolling off the table. Uh, anyway, all right. So I'm gonna hold down the alter option and I'm going to, that it's a dropper sample and I'm just sampling this color. Well, it's black, but you know, charcoal or whatever color. And I'm just going to lightly kind of paint right there, maybe a little bit larger. And you see it kind of removed that little area right there, the fold in the paper or whatever it is, imperfection. And then I'll grab this color here, right? And just kind of lightly, let me see what my, make sure your hardness is set to 0% or you could get streaks, okay? So that kind of smoothed that out, and then it's a little unsmooth in here. So maybe I'll, if you make it larger, it kind of, just like that, it kind of really does a good job of not giving you streaks and lines and being obvious that you made an edit, right? That's the, the key here. So I'm just sampling the color down here because it's, it's a gradient more or less, and there's a fold here in the paper. Here's another one over here, and I hope this comes through on YouTube. It's pretty evident to see on my large monitor, but maybe not so much on YouTube. Hopefully it comes through, but just going to kind of, and I'm just really lightly going over these areas, right? Just trying to make them a little more uniform. I don't really feel the need to come up here. It looks pretty good. Um, 
So then we have this area down here that's just not ideal. Uh, we've got a shadow behind her that we want to maintain. And fortunately, we can't really see this stuff in the shadow. So we're just going to come down here and grab that color there and just kind of do a few swipes. We just doesn't need to be perfect. But now this is kind of bluish in tone. So maybe we do a little swipe there. You know, it's not going to be perfect like it was, but we get that little reflection of her boots there. We want to keep that. We don't want to wipe it out. And so I'm just sampling as I go, right? And trying to just wipe out some of those footprints, right? And that cleaned it up quite a bit. There's some area right in here, but I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to turn off this layer, and you can see the before and then the after. And we've made it significantly cleaner, right? I'm going to deselect. Again, I will turn that off and then turn it on. We've maintained some of the depth because, you know, we've got the the fold and the paper there. And I, I like it. Um, I could zoom in. Maybe there's, I'll do a new blank layer. Grab the spot healing brush tool. See if there's any areas on the face. You can't really see them when you're zoomed out. Um, but we'll get a couple of the, the spots on the face. go she has really great skin so not a lot to do and I would just leave that the way it is she's good to go um, you could do things like brighten the eyes and all that you're not gonna get you're not gonna it's not noticeable enough for to even do that the only other thing maybe let's see if there's any hair cleanup maybe we come up here and we get some of these little flyaways that are not too bad either. Shout out to Cynthia Hernandez, the makeup artist, uh, and hair as well. She gets the hair in order and that helps a lot with things like flyaways like this, which there are hardly any. So hair is very well tamed. I'm sitting here trying to get a spot over here <laughs> and it's a spot on my screen. I'm like, why is it not going away? All right, time to clean the screen. So I'm pretty good with that. I'm just going to save that. And that's really all there is to it. I wouldn't really do anything else to this edit. I don't see a need to do any skin softening or anything like that. That is it. We're pretty much done with this edit. So if you like this uh, type of content, uh, make sure you're subscribed. I really appreciate it. It's a small channel. And uh, give it a like if you liked it. Appreciate it. Have a good one.